how they're currently framed, no ethical system would condone the excuses that some people use. Others are much more difficult. So it's a mixture of difficult questions, um, a lot of excuses that countries that have been using for climate change would pass, in my experience, no ethical test. Uh, uh, so for that reason, it's important to go to specific climate change issues. And that's what the, the uh, case studies that we're about to give out to you will do, specific issues. But before I get there, let me run through the slides very quickly. Uh, this is why this is a, a moral issue. Next slide, please. These are the countries emitting most of the greenhouse gases. Next slide. And these are the vulnerable countries. There's a complete split almost from the most vulnerable countries uh, to, to, the, to the countries uh, that are emitting the greenhouse gases. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next, next one. Okay, this is uh, greenhouse gases per uh, United States uh, uh, equivalent, a couple of states in the Midwest are equivalent to all of the greenhouse gases coming out of Africa. Uh, India is Texas and Louisiana, the entire country. There is great injustice, deep injustice, in terms of who's causing this problem. I also disagree that re 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 retributive justice is, is obviously an important part of this issue for some questions. Um, but again, we need to get to specifics. It's no help to sort of talk about at the abstract level. Next slide, please. Now, just very quickly tying this to the agenda of the CST. Agriculture, climate change. Next slide, please. Uh, these are the countries in red who are deeply uh, vulnerable to agricultural <laughs> dis disparities. Next slide. Africa is a basket case uh, with the various uh, uh, yeah, uh, assaults on Africa, whether it's water or desertification. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, these are countries, again, that have agriculture productivity who, is, who, who are vulnerable from climate change. Next slide, please. This is cereal reduction that is predicted by IPCC in Africa. The dark red is where, in fact, uh, IPCC saying that we're going to have, a, 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 they're t attempting to quantify reduction in food. Next slide, please. This is what happens to Uganda if, if there's a two degree centigrade rise. On the left you have where they grow coffee and brown and tan, and that's what happens to the coffee crop in Uganda with, with uh, in white. Uh, uh, and that's only a metaphor for parts of Africa, how they will be harmed by what we already are starting to do. Next slide, please. Uh, climate change and drought, it's devastating for, for parts of the world. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. I'm quite familiar with Western Kenya. There's a place called Lake Nakuru. All the models agree it's going to get drier. It would rip your heart out to see the women standing on the side of the road who are in drought conditions as we speak. It's not a future problem. It's a problem as we speak from about 8 tenths of a degree centigrade rise, which is small compared to where we're going if, if we don't change our behavior. Next slide. Uh, this shows you that part of, of Africa, Tanzania, and Kenya uh, that are already starting to get dry as the models predict. Next slide. Desertification will affect. These are all the themes of this CSD. Desertification. This is a drought, or this is desertification. Uh, next, next slide. Um, the models predict some places will get wetter, some places will get drier. It's not uniform. The models disagree. In, 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 Places like New York and Pennsylvania, whether it gets wetter or drier, but the models predict that all the models agree that some parts of the world will get drier, and lo and behold, it's starting to happen in places that the models predict will get drier. Next slide. Water stress. Uh, water stresses. Uh, many of these places are already water stressed. The models predict that some of these countries will be, become even more water stressed. Um, uh, this is, again, drought risk. Next slide. Um, Desertification, the dark red up there are places which are really vulnerable. The, the, the ability to, to, to grow crops is being, being destroyed both by practices and, and by, by uh, precipitation events. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, this is, again is in the dark red are, play, are parts of the world that are particularly vulnerable to, to uh, desertification. Next slide. Uh, development, that's the third theme of the CST. Uh, we can't separate environment and development in, anymore because of climate change. It's quite clear that climate change is, will affect 
it, and it, it, it will uh, interfere with uh, people's ability uh, to develop. Even if they have a right to development, they may not be able to develop. Uh, particularly, these are places which are really vulnerable to rising sea level. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, this is a composite of vulnerability. Uh, you can see Africa, uh, in particular, is vulnerable to a whole variety of different climate change assaults. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. Bangladesh is a basket case uh, because of rising sea level rise. Uh, just a couple of meters, there's something like uh, 80 million people within two or three meters of sea level rise. Next slide. Um, this is a, an IPC slide of, of, the, of the warmest uh, year on record. What happens towards the end of the century in terms of percentage years that exceed the warmest we've ever had? In the dark red, it's 100% of the year IPCC predicts that we will exceed the warmest record towards the end of the century every year. 100% of some parts of the world are predicted to have warmer temperatures than we've ever experienced within those areas before. Next slide, please. This is Carl Reeves. Next slide, please. One, a couple more slides and I'm finished and we'll go to the, to the uh, next slide, please. Oops, okay. Well, what I wanted to say is this. Um, what we need to do is not talk, eth ethics and morality is key to moving particularly the countries that are emitting the emissions to help and protect the countries in red which are vulnerable to the emissions. But what we need to do is pay attention to specific arguments, specific issues, tease out of those issues what's ethically problematic about positions that countries have, uh, have, have taken. In my experience, some of the excuses will be, cross-culturally will agree that they're deeply ethically problematic, despite the fact that they're there are different ethical positions. Going back to John Brickman's question about universality, I don't believe at all you need to have all uh, have a universal uh, ethical basis to condemn some positions that are taken because all ethical systems would condemn the, the, those behaviors. Uh, let me give you a couple of examples. The United States used for 20 years three excuses. One, cost to the US economy alone cost to the U.S. economy alone was justification for not entering into the Kyoto Protocol. I represented the United States. I was the U.S. EPA liaison to, to the U.N. We were fighting over two cost-benefit analysis. The cost-benefit analysis only looked at cost and benefits to the U.S. government alone. You get what's wrong with that ethically and morally if you're a small home developing state. You get what's wrong with that position if you're Bangladesh, okay? That's not, that's a no-brainer, okay? If you're Bangladesh and the U.S. says, uh, we are going to look at cost and benefits to us alone and we're causing the problem, no ethical system would condone that, but we've got to wake up, we've got to turn up the volume on the ethical and moral dimensions of this issue. Why didn't anybody, why wasn't there a conversation in the United States about the U.S. attempt to justify not, not joining the Kyoto Protocol on a cost-benefit analysis that looked at cost and benefits to us alone. I could go on, but it's more important to get you involved with specific case studies because there the, the obvious ethical issues will arise in the context of specific issues.